Good morning to you. Mark Settle, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Monday, the 21st of August, 2023. I am still in California, over in Cathedral City, not far from Palm Springs. Strop me out for a second. Just look at that map. Quite an extraordinary shot there. There's post-tropical Hillary in Nevada. I mean, really? And we have seen the damage that has occurred down here with all the flooding. It uh, came to pass what we were fearing not as catastrophic, certainly, but a lot of damage nonetheless, a lot of people, a lot of infrastructure impacted. But now we need to start turning our attention to the Atlantic Basin, where we have three named storms currently. Yes, a couple of them are kind of a mess. It is this one right here that we need to be, I think, the most concerned with in terms of impacts to people and places and things. And then you don't see it but it's coming. We've got a system in here in the Gulf of Mexico that I do believe will be our next tropical storm. And because this very short-lived feature right here became girt overnight, the next one will become Herald. So we are moving down the list rather quickly. A lot of activity out here, and it's only August 21st. So let's take a look real quick. I've got to uh, get through this because I might as well break this news to you now. As soon as I get this video online, I'm going to jump in the shower and uh, hopefully refresh, <laughs> probably get the temperature down on that thing to wake me up. I'm driving to Phoenix, and then I'm getting on a plane, and I'm going to San Antonio, and then I'm going to drive down to Corpus Christi, and I'm going to be in position for what I think will be Tropical Storm Herald tomorrow morning in about 24 hours or less. So there you go. Let's get back to this, though. This is important. Here's all of our features out in the tropics. Look, we have Franklin, we have Emily out here, we have Gert. So Franklin is of concern for our friends down here in the islands. Let's go back to our interactive map over here and I can zoom in. This is going to come in over the Dominican Republic. It's mountainous down there, lots of rain, uh, even potentially some impacts over here in Puerto Rico and parts of the U.S. and British Virgin Islands by way of moisture and bands that come in and around this system. Just a very unstable air mass down here now. We've pretty much gotten rid of a lot of the Saharan air layer and the dust. Now we're dealing with tropical cyclones, but this is going to come in uh, over portions of the Dominican Republic as a tropical storm. And the rain, the rain, the rain, that is the impact here. But then after that, uh, this one is forecast to become a hurricane out over the Atlantic and we're going to have to watch this as it relates to the potential for impacts in Bermuda. And maybe, this is a long shot down the road, our friends up here in Atlantic Canada. We just need to be aware. You know, This is down here now, but many days out, the pattern could be such that Bermuda could have some impacts. Maybe Atlantic Canada up here, hard to say. And as this ramps up in the southwest Atlantic, we will start to get swells for the east and southeast coast of the United States. So impacts are coming to what degree we will have to wait and see from there. But back over to the National Hurricane Center homepage, just let's take a look here. This is Invest Area 91L right now, but it is forecast to strengthen and there may be watches and warnings issued later today. It says interest right here in southern Texas Northern Mexico should monitor the progress of this system uh, as tropical storm watches and warnings are likely to be issued later today. So our friends down here in Texas, let's get this color up to, let's use red, that'll be better. Um, down here in Texas from Corpus, south, and then of course northern Mexico. There it is, lots of energy there gathering over the Gulf. And as we've talked about, the Gulf of Mexico, very, very warm uh, above normal pretty much the entire Gulf, and this is going to tap into that. The good thing about this, this will take some some of the heat out of the Gulf, but it's not going to cool it off substantially. But we might take that edge off a little bit, and uh, later in the hurricane season, maybe a little bit of good news there. And, of course, this will bring some much-needed rain for portions of Texas. But with that, that benefit comes some negative benefits. The storm surge with that onshore flow, um, possibility of flooding rain. It's been a while, so your soils are kind of dried up. And as we saw in the desert southwest, that can lead to some quick flash flooding. 
By the way, just check out the enormity of the big old high sitting over the country's midsection here. And then to the south of it, there is our developing tropical cyclone. That's just the general definition, right? Uh, and I do think this will go. And I'll prove that to you, or at least present my evidence as to why I think that in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is our convection associated with Franklin. A lot of blobs and not a lot of banding, so that's indicative of not a very healthy system overall. It is very convectively active, but it is not very well organized just yet. And again, the main threat down here is going to be very heavy rainfall. Everything's above normal down here. All the water temperatures are above normal, so your precipitable water, the available water in the atmosphere is going to be quite substantial. So just keep that in mind if you have plans to go down to the Dominican Republic. Uh, this could be pretty problematic for down there. Farther to the east, more activity out in the open Atlantic. Luckily, upper level low pressure areas like this one, there's just all kinds of shear going on. We've dropped the dry air, not entirely, but it's greatly reduced, the, the African dust, all that. Now we have these upper level lows, the El Nino trying to do its thing. I will say that in the next couple of weeks, it does look like the pattern, I mean, we've got all this, and it's in a pretty bad pattern. It looks like we're going to get into a more favorable upper pattern over the next week to 10 days. We'll talk more about that on an update, well, probably Wednesday. i got a lot to do between now and then. But all this activity happening in a rather hostile background environment, it does look like as we get into September that the environment will improve for a couple of weeks, and we could have even more activity, and then we'll see what influences the El Nino has. There's some talk that it could uh, bring the hammer down pretty hard. We'll see. Sometimes when the Atlantic gets going, it's hard for it to stop. So this is a remarkable shot as well. I just wanted to point out a couple of things. Here is your rain and moisture and the low pressure area associated with Hillary in Nevada. Again, just very alien to say that. And then down here is 91L. Eventually, I do believe this will be Herald. Now, the GFS is helpful, but we do have hurricane models now. We're going to talk about those in just a minute. This is the GFS from the 6Z run, and I'm showing you the 5,000 foot, I'm sorry, the 10 meter wind speed, so it's about 35 feet up, and um, the mean sea level pressure. So you get an idea of the surface wind and the air pressure with this. And it doesn't show up as much now. There's the impulse. That is 91L. And this is Franklin down here in the Caribbean. So let's just move this through frame by frame. And again, the GFS ramps it up right towards the coast there. And you say, oh, 1,000 millibars, big deal. Well, the global models are not always, they're not hurricane models. They're not, it's kind of like using the global models to try to predict a tornado outbreak. You can get an idea of the background state. And just let me show you that right here, the background state. So this is the surface. What does it look like in the upper levels of the atmosphere, what we call the outflow level? Well, it's not ideal, but it is pretty favorable overall. We're not seeing a band of like westerly winds coming across it. It is in a fairly favorable location. Some outflow coming on here, outflow over here. Uh, yeah, this could ramp up over those very warm water temperatures. The global models are helpful for the background pattern. Sometimes they nail the intensity, but that's not what they're for. For that, we use the hurricane-specific models. This one's on the way out. This one will be replaced by this next one that I'm going to show you. This is the H-Wharf, and this is what it does, okay? So watch this. This is um, your mean sea level pressure and sort of a simulated radar, if you will, composite reflectivity. So this is tomorrow, tomorrow, I wish. This is today, late in the day today, and you see the pressure in there at low 1,000s, and then overnight tonight, so 1 a.m. Texas time here, 2 a.m. Eastern, it starts to deepen. There's 998, 997, 992, and then look at the structure, and then it finally comes ashore south of Corpus Christi as a strengthening tropical storm. That is very important. Let's just back this up, and I think we can look at the wind field on here. Yep. Uh, wait a minute. Sorry. Let's see if I can. Yep, there it is. So the wind field on here, look at those 
Uh, and now this is also 10 meters, so at least everything's matched up, so to speak, from what I showed you over here on the GFS. So overnight, uh, as this comes in, look at that. I mean, it does try to ramp up. So this is 7 a.m. tomorrow, just offshore. Some of these wind gusts at 10 meters uh, in the 40s and 50 knots, onshore flow up towards Corpus Christi, there will be a surge up there, absolutely. Some of those greens in there in the 40s, and you know, no, it's not Harvey, no, it's not the worst thing ever. Of course not. I'm not going to hype it up for that, but it is an impactful event, and it's going to bring some rain and some flooding. Um, so, you know, be ready if you're down there. It's been a while, so don't let this take you by surprise. And then this moves inland over time and quickly dissipates, but it will bring a pretty substantial amount of moisture to this area down here and it could bring a quick flash flood threat when it does so as well. Meanwhile, one of the newer models for hurricane intensity prediction and track is the HAFS, and this one's showing some promise. We'll talk about the differences between them in another update. I gotta get this done and get ready to get out of here. I got a four hour drive to Phoenix, but it shows pretty much the same thing a ramping up right before this makes landfall. So again, this is your overnight hours into tomorrow morning, 991 as this approaches. Pretty much the same spot that the H wharf has this coming into and the wind speed on this more concentrated around a center, but some uh, tropical storm wind at the surface, 10 meters in the area of Corpus Christi and points north. Pretty much all of this area that has onshore flow, you guys know Texas down here. If you live there, you can pile up that water pretty efficiently from Matagorda Bay down to um, Corpus Christi Bay. Yeah, this could be, you know, a few feet of inundation. Docks, boats, low-lying areas, you could get some flooding, the onshore wave action. So, you know, not blowing this out of proportion, but it's not going to be nothing. I just, I hate it when people say that. They go, it's going to be nothing. This is nothing. Well, if, if it destroys your boat or, you know, the flooding causes you to wreck your car or whatever, then I would say it's something. These all have impacts, and that's the main focus of what we do here at Hurricane Track. Um, we do make sure we are ready for our Heralds. This is probably going to be Herald, which does replace Harvey. Harvey was retired six years ago. It was very devastating. Harvey was. They retired it off the list of names, this one will be Harold. And we are, we're very interested in the Harolds and the Harveys out there, you bet. So that's the update for today. Let me get this online for you. And uh, then I'm gonna hit the road. And once I get there and get everything set up, hopefully I have a couple of live cams. I don't have a lot of resources with me because um, I was in California. It's like, ugh, but hey, I'm gonna go for it and at least I'll have uh, uh, you know, the live feed and me to report. And I think I brought one of my Kestrels so I can do some pressure readings. But I'm not really going for the center, by the way. I'm going to be going more for the impacts in Corpus Christi, uh, unless this really ramps up. But we'll see. Anyway, let me get out of here and get this online for you. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers to the YouTube channel. I do appreciate your time and attention as well. If you're from out west, don't unsubscribe. Come on, you're a weather geek probably somewhere. Stick around and you can learn a lot from us here at Hurricane Track. I am Mark Suddeth. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next from Texas.